are you wearing your oxygen mask? Have you ever been on a plane when the flight attendant gave me the old oxygen mask speech? I'm sure you're familiar with it. Go goes something like this. Ladies and gentlemen, passengers, in the event of a drop in cabin pressure, a mask will drop from above. Please put the mask on yourself first before assisting a child or someone else. Next time you plan to fly, please take a plane. <laughs> Last part I added in. <laughs> What's The first time I heard that, I thought that can't be right. Have you seen my little guy? There's no way I would take care of myself first. I would put the mask on him first. I would just as soon die and save him. Any parent would. That can't be right. They must have that wrong. So I talked to the airlines. They actually have done a lot of research into this. And they're right. I'm wrong. Surprise. <laughs> Here's the theory. When you're at 30,000 plus feet, I don't know how many of you know this, but if there was that dramatic of a drop in cabin pressure and the masks fell, you'd literally have seconds to get your oxygen mask on before you would pass out. So if you as the adult, who is supposedly know what they're doing, if you don't get your mask on right away, you are going to be passed out by the time you have to help your child. So you've got to get the oxygen mask on, get his oxygen mask on, and then you're good to go and help other people. This really is a metaphor for life. You have to put your oxygen mask on first, meaning you have to take care of yourself first before you can be a blessing to anybody else. I know this to be true because I run into people all the time who are spending too much time serving others and they don't take time to take care of themselves. Think back to the glory days. What do I mean by that? When we work with clients and getting them in shape, I'll say to a man, tell me about the glory days. Tell me when you were on top of your game, when you couldn't have been in better shape. You know what a guy will say to me? Well, I was a senior in high school, <laughs> captain of the football team, Boy, was I in good shape. I could run like the wind. And I'll tell you, the chicks dug me. <laughs> I used to walk around with one of those little half shirts, my abs showing. Man, I was bad. I had the energy of 10 men. Yeah, I remember those days. Those were the good old days. <laughs> you know what women will say? Well, I think it was my junior no, maybe it was my sophomore year in college. I was 105 pounds. I could eat anything that I want, and I still look great in a bikini. <laughs> Everybody has a glory days story. You're thinking about it right now as you're sitting here. Now, it's another example of the body controlling the mind. Because when I ask people about the glory days story, they smile, they laugh, they get happy. Why do they get happy? Because they remember a time when they felt their best. And when they felt their best, they were on top of their game. They were on fire for whatever was happening in their life. They had passion. Am I wrong about that? The glory days. Were you on top of your game in every facet of your life? You bet you were. And it had a, everything to do with the way you felt physically. This is as much a spiritual battle as it is a physical battle. Let's talk about this. First, how many of you ever realized that the first sin committed was with food? I mean, there's lots of sins. The first one ever committed was with food. Eve ate the apple. What did she do? She ate something she wasn't supposed to. And for thousands of years, we've been eating things we're not supposed to. Stuff that's bad for us. By the way, guys love to rub in to women that Eve ate the apple first. They love to grind women on that. I've been around church all my life. I know how this conversation goes. 
Guys, just a word of advice to you. If you take the time to study this, ask yourself this question. Where was Adam when Eve was eating the apple? He's standing right next to her. (laughs) He's standing right next to her. He's totally oblivious to what's going on. He's just like... (laughs) He could have said something. He could have said, hey, um... I'm thinking we're not supposed to eat. (laughs) He doesn't say anything. He just lets her eat it. And then he goes, oh, I'll take a bite. He takes a bite. So guys, we can't kind of crow around like a rooster that Eve made the first sin. We can't. I like to say to my wife all the time, you see... Adam was absolutely oblivious. This is why I don't pay attention today. She always says to me, are you listening? Not the way God intended it to be. How did he intend it to be? It was supposed to be a perfect utopia here on earth. Since the Lord created the human body, do you think he knows what's best for us to eat? I mean, think about this for a second. He just created Adam. God's saying, oh, Adam, Adam, magnificent. You know what you need now? (laughs) Ho-hos. I need to create ho-hos for you. There's no chance that God said, Adam needs ho-hos. Your children... They were not born with an Oreo gene. (laughs) They have no biological, no physiological response to have Oreos. How do they love Oreos? You know how? You introduced them to him. You said, here, have, this is good. And they agreed. (laughs) For the next 25 years, they agreed. Non-stop. God built us. He knows exactly what we need to eat. We need to eat living food. What is living food? Living food is foods that contain active enzymes that add life to our body. We're walking around eating dead food. We're eating food that only contains calories. It's like filling up space. We don't eat, we eat processed food like there's no tomorrow. We eat sodas filled with high fructose corn syrup. You want to talk about gumming us up? This stuff is gumming us up. We need to be eating living foods, fruits, vegetables. I like to tell people, if it comes out of a package, you ain't eating it. If it comes out of the ground or grows off a tree, that's what God wanted you to eat. 